Deputy High Commissioner for Human Rights. The list of speakers will close in 15 minutes. Mr. High Commissioner, you have the floor. Mr. President, Excellencies, distinguished delegates, there appear to be no bounds to, no words to capture the horrors that are unfolding before our eyes in Gaza. Since early October, over 100,000 people have been killed or wounded. Let me repeat that. About one in every 20 children, women and men, are now dead or wounded. At least 17,000 children are orphaned or separated from their families, while many more will carry the scars of physical and, in, and emotional trauma lifelong. Today, the total number of people killed has exceeded 30,000. And tens of thousands of people are missing, many presumed buried under the rubble of their homes. This is carnage. The attacks on Israeli civilians on 7 and 8 October were shocking, profoundly traumatizing and totally unjustifiable. The killing of civilians, reports of torture and sexual violence inflicted by Hamas and other Palestinian armed groups, and the holding of hostages since that time are appalling and entirely wrong. And so is the brutality of the Israeli response. The unprecedented level of killing and maiming of civilians in Gaza, including UN staff and journalists, the catastrophic humanitarian crisis caused by restrictions on humanitarian aid, the displacement of at least three quarters of the population, often multiple times, the massive destruction of hospitals and other civilian infrastructure, and in many cases, systematic demolition of entire neighborhoods, rendering Gaza largely unlivable. The war in Gaza must end. Clear violations of international human rights and humanitarian laws, including war crimes and possibly other crimes under international law, have been committed by all parties. It is time well past time for peace, investigation, and accountability. Excellencies, last year I described before this Council the already dire situation across the occupied Palestinian territory. In 56 years of Israeli occupation, profoundly discriminatory systems of control were imposed on Palestinians to restrict their rights including the right to movement, with major impact on their, on their equality, housing, health, work, education and family life. A 16-year-long blockade of the Gaza Strip kept most of its 2.2 million people effectively in captivity and destroyed the local economy. The lives of generations of Palestinians in the West Bank were punctuated by harassment, control, arbitrariness, including arbitrary arrests and detentions, and increasing Israeli military and settler violence. Meanwhile, illegal settlements continue to grow, leading de facto to increased annexation of Palestinian lands. Imagine the endless humiliation and suppression endured. Today, this situation is incomparably worse. The, the report which is before you makes for very painful reading. Thousands of tons of munitions have been dropped by Israel on Gaza, including repeated use of explosive weapons with wide area effects. These weapons send out massive blast waves of high pressure that may rupture internal organs, as well as fragmentation projectiles and heat so intense that it causes deep burns and they have been used in densely populated residential neighborhoods. In Egypt's Al Arish hospital last November, I saw children whose flesh had been seared. I will never forget this. Under Article 1, common to the four Geneva Conventions, all states must respect and crucially ensure respect for international humanitarian law set out in those conventions. This responsibility comes alive when there's a real risk that arms transferred to a party to a conflict 
may be used in violation of this law. Any such enabling of violations of international humanitarian law must cease at once. This is the core of due diligence. Over the past five months of warfare, the Office has recorded many incidents that may amount to war crimes by Israeli forces, as well as indications that Israeli forces have engaged in indiscriminate or disproportionate targeting that violates international humanitarian law. The launching by Palestinian armed groups of indiscriminate projectiles across southern Israel and as far as Tel Aviv also violates international humanitarian law, as does the continued holding of hostages. And I have met with some of the hostages' families, and I feel their pain. Mr. President, between 8 and 21 October last year, Israel imposed a complete ban on all supply of food, aid, fuel, and electricity to Gaza. Since then, Israel has continued to hinder humanitarian assistance. All people in Gaza are at imminent risk of famine. Almost all are drinking salty and contaminated water. Healthcare across the territory is barely functioning. Just imagine what this means for the wounded and for people suffering infectious disease outbreaks. In northern Gaza, where the operational space for humanitarian work is now almost zero, many are already believed to be starving. In all other parts of Gaza, humanitarian assistance has become extremely challenging, and this is not only dangerous, but also dehumanizing. The blockade and siege imposed on Gaza amount to collective punishment and may also amount to the use of starvation as a method of war, both of which committed intentionally are war crimes. In addition, almost all the population of Gaza has been forcibly displaced and thousands of people have been detained, many of them incommunicado, in conditions that may amount to enforced disappearance. Let me be absolutely clear and issue yet another stark warning. The prospect of an Israeli crowned assault on Rafah would take the nightmare being inflicted on people in Gaza to a new dimension. Over 1.5 million people are sheltering in Rafah despite continuing bombardment, and it has become Gaza's humanitarian hub. A ground assault would incur potentially massive loss of life, additional risk of atrocity crimes, new displacement to another unsafe location distribution, and sign a death warrant for any hope of effective humanitarian aid. For my part, I fail to see how such an operation could be consistent with the binding provisional measures that were issued by the International Court of Justice. I call on all states with influence to do everything within their power to avert such an outcome. Mr. President, in the occupied West Bank, including East Jerusalem, Israeli forces' use of airstrikes, attack helicopters, anti-tank missiles, shoulder-fired explosive projectiles, and other weapons of war has continued to increase with lethal results, including killings of children. The report also notes a growing pattern of Israeli forces preventing paramedics from reaching Palestinians, including children, who have been injured in such operations. From 1 January to 6 October last, last year had already seen the highest levels of violence by Israeli military personnel and settlers against Palestinians in the occupied West Bank, including East Jerusalem, since United Nations records began in 2005. From 7 October last year to 23 February this year, at least 401 Palestinians in the West Bank were killed, 102 of them children. The vast majority of cases that the office has monitored raise concerns of unlawful killings, including extrajudicial killings. In the past, accountability was very rarely served in such cases. In such cases, it is imperative that it is served now. Since 7 October, more than 7,000 Palestinians in the occupied West Bank have been arbitrarily detained. About 9,000 are currently being held in, as so-called security prisoners. Over 3,400 of them in administrative detention without charge or prospect of a trial, and at least 606 are being held incommunicado. 
Mr. President, and yet we must hold on to the promise that peace is achievable in the occupied Palestinian territory and Israel. For that to work, the occupation must end. Israeli leaders must accept the right of Palestinians to live in an independent state. And all Palestinian factions must accept the right of Israel to, to exist in peace and security. The goal is to achieve a safer, more peaceful future for all. And the war in Gaza is taking Palestinians and Israelis further from that goal every day. There must be an end to these hostilities, not only an immediate ceasefire, but an end to this war. All hostages must immediately and uncondi unconditionally be released, and the thousands of Palestinians arbitrarily detained by Israel must also be released. Accountability must be served on all sides. A raft of measures to re-establish human rights, equality, accountability and justice must be adopted across the occupied Palestinian territory and Israel. I urge a positive response to the repeated requests by my office for full access to Israel and the occupied Palestinian territory to document and investigate credible allegations of human rights violations and abuses. Keeping Palestinians and their rights walled off, out of sight, out of mind, has not worked in 56 years, and it can never, ever work. The core challenge of building peace is for all to see and fully grasp the humanity of the other, overcoming mindsets that have been deeply engraved by generations of harm and rage and which conceal the truth that people, Palestinian and Israeli people, are being cruelly harmed. Excellencies, whether in Gaza or anywhere else, I urge you all to avert a new era of power politics that casts aside laws, norms, and institutions so painstakingly built to advance them. Our universal rights and fundamental humanity depend on reversing any such trajectory. Thank you. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Haut Commissaire, pour la présentation de votre rapport sur ce sujet qui préoccupe légitimement, fortement, notre Conseil, comme il ressort d'ailleurs de dialogues de haut niveau que nous avons eus depuis le début de cette session. Selon les pratiques établies par notre Conseil, nous allons maintenant écouter les délégations des pays directement concernés par ce sujet. Et je donne à cet égard la parole à Madame la, représente, à la distinguée représentante d'Israël. Vous avez cinq minutes, Madame l'ambassadrice. Thank you, Mr. President. Israel is at war with a terrorist organization that perpetrated one of the most heinous and deadly terrorist attacks of modern times. In the early hours of October 7th, thousands of terrorists, yes, terrorists, Mr. High Commissioner, not simply armed groups, entered Israel, leaving devastation in their wake. By nightfall, over 1,200 innocent people had been butchered, with countless others subjected to unspeakable acts of violence at the hands of Hamas. The minimal reference to these horrific acts in your statement today is an affront to the victims and supports those who seek to remove these crimes from the narrative altogether. Israel is fighting in a battlefield that Hamas has created in Gaza, one in which terrorists hide behind and within the civilian population, one that the UN has witnessed being built around and below them for years and chose to ignore, one in which 500 kilometers of terror tunnels snake beneath civilian infrastructure homes, school, and UN headquarters, where thousands of rockets are launched indiscriminately at our cities and where innocent civilians are intentionally placed in harm's way. The use of Palestinian civilians as human shields by Hamas in Gaza is well known and yet constantly ignored by the High Commissioner and this Council. Israel has been told time and time again the terrorists who have diverted aid built terror tunnels, brutally murdered innocent civilians, 
raped, beheaded, burned families alive cannot be touched because they hide among the civilian population. Yet we have no choice. We must go after Hamas or they will continue to come after us. But let me be clear, even as Hamas rains down rockets on us, even as our hostages remain in captivity, even as Hamas continues to carry out heinous terrorist at attacks, Israel is absolutely committed to conducting itself in accordance with the IHL. It is why Israel has so many mechanisms in place to ensure our full commitment to international law, including through the use of early warnings to civilians and a robust legal framework to ensure distinction, proportionality, and precaution. And it is why we have facilitated the transfer of more than 260 4,000 tons of humanitarian aid into Gaza, why we opened the Kerem Shalom crossing in Israel to get more aid in, and why just yesterday Israel cooperated with partners to airdrop 160 packs of food and medical equipment into Gaza. Mr. High Commissioner, for years the United Nations has ignored Palestinian terrorism, destruction, hatred, and incitement. For years it has disregarded and ignored Israel's security concerns. For years, it has ignored the hundreds of Israelis murdered on our streets. Neither in your report or statement today did you mention the Israelis killed by terrorists before and after October 7th. Do they not matter? Nor did you mention the Palestinian authorities' pay to slay policy where it rewards those who carry out such murderous attacks. Tell me, if Israel withdraws from Gaza tomorrow, do you think Hamas would lay down its arms? Do you think Hamas will commit to not rebuilding its tunnels and restoring its terrorist arsenal and instead commit to justice and peace? You think if Israel stopped this war today, Hamas will return all our hostages tomorrow? Mr. High Commissioner, the answer is simply no. Therefore, Therefore, Israel has a duty to its population to ensure that never again Ham can Hamas attack our lands, never again can it seek to eradicate our people. Sitting behind me today are Aviva Siegel and Raz Benami. For over 50 days, these two courageous women endured unspeakable horrors in Hamas captivity. As we speak, their husband, Keith and Oad, are still languishing in Gaza. These halls should have been a symbol of hope for Aviva and Raz and all the hostages, that the world would act for their human rights and their release. Yet, unfortunately, they have become a mere footnote in the discourse of this Council, as reflected in the statement just made by the High Commissioner. For Israel, as long as even a single person remains ensnared in the clutches of terror, we will not rest. So you can continue to speak in this echo chamber where the human rights of Israelis and Jews mean nothing. Meanwhile, we will continue to do all we can to bring our people home. Thank you. I thank Your Excellency for your declaration. And now I give the floor to the distinguished representative of the State of Palestine, Mr. Ambassador, you have five minutes. Shukran, Sayyid al-Rais. Bidayatan, awada nashkur mufawad al-Sami wa maktabihi ala adad hadha al-takrir raghma mulahadatna al-qanuniya wal-marja'iya wa tahdidan ma warada fi shahar oktober al-madi fi hadha al-takrir wal-i'atimad ala televizyon kuwa al-ihtilal وعلى هيئة الإذاعة البريطانية بي بي سي وإدعاءاتها دون أي تحقيق مستقل هذا الأمر مرفوض وقد أخذنا علما بما ورد في تقريركم في بعض المخالفات في الضفة الغربية ومناطق السلطة وجار العمل على متابعتها بما ينسجم والدستور وأحكام القانون ونتطلع لتعزيز التعاون مع مكتبكم من أجل تعزيز حقوق الإنسان في فلسطين مقدرين عاليا دوركم في هذا المجال تابعتم قبل قليل نفس الإسطوانة 
التي تقوم بها إسرائيل أنا بالتأكيد هناك سيدتين كما تدعي ممثلة القوى القائمة بالاحتلال لهم بعض المحتجزين قد يكون لديهم مشاعر ليقولوا لنا تقييمهم لما حصل قبل حوالي ساعة ونصف من الآن كان هناك المئات من الفلسطينيين المدنيين في شمال غزة في شارع الرشيد في دوار النابلسي ينتظرون سيارات الطعام قامت قوات الاحتلال بقصفهم حتى الآن هناك 160 شهيد وأكثر من ألف جريح معظمهم في حالة الخطر هل هؤلاء هم دروع بشرية؟ هل هؤلاء هم مقاتلي حماس؟ ممثلة قوة القتل والإجرام والإبادة؟ كفى هذه المهزلة وكفى أن يشاهد العالم هذه الجريمة وهذه الإبادة والكل يقول أو يحاول أن يصدق هذا الإدعاء الكاذب كما قالت قبل قليل بأنهم يحترموا القانون وللأسف البعض أيضا يدين ما حصل يوم 7 أكتوبر وبأشد العبارات لكن لا أحد يذكر أو يدين قتل الأطفال والنساء والشيوخ وتدمير المؤسسات المحمية قانونا وتدمير البنى التحتية حتى هذه اللحظة أكثر من ثلاثين ألف شهيد منهم أربعة وسبعين في المية من النساء والأطفال أكثر من سبعين ألف جريح اتناشر ألف وستمائة طفل ثمن آلاف امرأة هؤلاء مقاتلين هؤلاء دروع بشرية معيب ما يحصل في القرن الواحد والعشرين وصمة عار على جبين البشرية أنت جميعا لكم أطفال يساهد هذه المجزرة لا أعلم كيف سيكبر هؤلاء الأطفال وكيف سينظر إلى ما تقولون وتحاولوا أن تبرروا والبعض يوم أمس وبشكل مخزي لا زال يناقش في البند السابع عيب هذا الكلام البند السابع لهذا السبب نحن نريد أكثر من بند سابع يجب أن يكون هناك مئة بند من أجل إجبار قوة الاحتلال قوة القتل والإبادة أن تحترم التزاماتها القانونية أن تعلموا أن هناك أكثر من مليون وتسعمائة ألف فلسطيني تم تهجيرهم قصرا مليون وثلاثمائة ألف الآن محاصرين في رفح ويهدد هذا المجرم وأركان حربه بأنهم سيقوموا بارتكاب مجزرة جديدة ضدهم ولا زالت أمريكا ورئيسها يعطوا الغطاء من خلال الفيتو في مجلس الأمن لعدم صدور قرار من أجل وقف إطلاق النار لا الإنساني ولا وقف إطلاق نار دائم وهذا أمر معيب ولا زالت أمريكا تدعم إسرائيل بالسلاح والمال ويتحدث كلاما معسولا نحن لا نريد من أي كان أن يوصف لنا الحالة المأساوية في قطاع غزة نحن نعيشها وأنتم تشاهدوها نريد منكم أن تتخذوا خطوات عملية وقف تصدير السلاح وقف الدعم المالي قطع العلاقات الاقتصادية والدبلوماسية هذه العصابة لا يمكن ردعها إلا باتخاذ إجراءات عقابية ونحن في تقرير حول المساءلة والمحاسبة لو كان هناك مساءلة لو كان هناك محاسبة لما حصل ما حصل وأنتم تعلموا أننا من حيث المبدأ كفلسطين ضد استهداف المدنيين من أي طرف كان سواء كان قبل 7 أكتوبر أو في 7 أكتوبر وما بعد ذلك عليكم أن تأخذوا ذلك في عين الاعتبار وأن لا يكون الموضوع بدأ في 7 أكتوبر 75 عام من النكبة 56 من الاحتلال 17 عام من الحصار لا أحد منكم يذكر أنه منذ عام 2000 حتى 7 أكتوبر هناك 19 ألف شهيد مدني فلسطيني لم نسمع إدانة من أي كان هناك سقوط أخلاقي وسقوط إنساني وعنصري وإستراتيجي عليكم أن تستفيقوا وأن تعملوا القانون شكرا سيد الرئيس أشكر سعادتكم على مدخلتكم Now I give the floor to the distinguished representative.
uh, of uh, the list of speakers, and I would also announce this. the list of speakers is now closed. So, the next speaker is Pakistan on behalf of the OIC. Pakistan, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. The OIC group thanks the High Commissioner for presenting the report and appreciates the OHCHR for their efforts. We have just listened to the Palestinian ambassador and the room has spoken. The report is an indictment of human rights violations by the occupying power Israel, its military forces, public officials and settlers. It also confirms violations of international humanitarian law, including collective punishment and forcible transfer of the Palestinian people like the Nakba of 1948. We emphasize that in making human rights assessments, there can be no false equivalence between the occupying power and those under occupation. The report paves the way for accountability. In this context, context Israel's refusal to grant access or human rights investigative mechanisms is telling. The OIC group condemns in the strongest terms Israel's crime of military aggression, crimes against humanity, acts amounting to the crime of genocide, and systematic oppression throughout the occupied Palestinian territory. We call for an immediate and unconditional ceasefire and the immediate and unconditional entry of all aid into Gaza. The occupying power and all other states must respect the ICJ's provisional orders to prevent genocidal acts. We reaffirm our abiding support for the inalienable rights of the Palestinian people, most notably their right to self-determination and the realization of an independent and sovereign state of Palestine on the borders of 4 June 1967 with Al-Quds al-Sharif as its capital. Thank you, sir. I thank Your Excellency for your declaration. And now the floor is for Qatar on behalf of the Cooperation Council for the Arab States of the Gulf. See the safir al karim أخذت دول مجلس التعاون علما بالتقرير حول الوضع المأساوي لحقوق الإنسان في الأراضي الفلسطينية المحتلة ومع استمرار العدوان الإسرائيلي الهمجي غير المتناسب والعشوائي على قطاع غزة بلغت الأوضاع درجة غير مسبوقة من التدهور تحول فيها قطاع غزة إلى مقبرة شاسعة بعد أن كان أكبر سجن مفتوح في العالم لأكثر من 16 عاما إن التصعيد الأخير قد يكون الأبشع باعتباره على مرأة ومسمع العالم للانتهاكات الممنهجة والمستمرة التي تضاف إلى سجل الاحتلال وفصل آخر من فصول المعاناة المستمرة والظلم الذي يواجهه الشعب الفلسطيني منذ عقود تدين دول المجلس استمرار الجرائم والعدوان الإسرائيلي ضد الشعب الفلسطيني والإبادة الجماعية والقصف العشوائي باستخدام الأسلحة الثقيلة والمحرمة دوليا والتهجير القسري والتجويع والحصار والتدمير الشامل في تحد صارخ للقوانين الدولية والإنسانية وتلاحظ دول المجلس ببالق القلق تفاوت المجتمع الدولي لهذه الأزمة بين القيم المعلنة لحقوق الإنسان والموقف غير المبالي الذي يتبناه كثيرين ويسلط الضوء على المعايير المزدوجة والتسييس من هذا المنطلق نجدد دعواتنا للمجتمع الدولي لإنصاف هذا الشعب المظلوم واتخاذ إجراءات فورية لمحاسبة المرتكبين والسعي الجاد والصادق لإيجاد حل عاجل للقضية الفلسطينية وفق مبادرة السلام العربية وقرارات الشرعية الدولية بما يلبي الحقوق المشروعة للشعب الفلسطيني وإنهاء معاناته المستمرة جراء الاعتداءات والانتهاكات المستمرة وإنشاء دولته المستقلة والمعترف بها دوليا على حدود الرابع من يونيو عام 1767 وعاصمتها القدس الشرق أشكركم على مداخلتكم جدور من تنالة باغول الوني أغوبين هاي كميشنا We thank you for your tireless work and for your strong voice in defense of human rights. The EU deplores all loss of civilian lives and expresses condolences for all UN staff killed in Gaza. We note your call for ceasefire on human rights and humanitarian grounds. We reiterate our concern for the humanitarian situation and call for safe humanitarian access through all necessary means. The EU condemns the terrorist attacks by Hamas, including sexual and gender-based violence. Israel has the right to defend itself in line with international law, including international humanitarian and human rights law. We underline the obligation.